y'all doing? We're back for another chit chat video. I hope you uh a piece of you chocolate Capricorn. <laughs> Damn, like it. you coming on here with an attitude. Oh y'all, hold on. I had a bagel. I was craving bagels in my vlog. I sit up here and had a leftover one. I can't do it, y'all. I don't eat. First of all, that's the first time I had a bagel in a long time. And cream cheese. I normally don't do all that. So, girl, let's just get right into this. Talk about your digestive issues. So, y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life. I talk about what I'm watching on YouTube and what I'm watching on TV. So, all right, you guys. What we're going to be doing is... <laughs> this was... It was cute, but I told y'all, this lasted, honestly, excuse me, it still lasted, this is three days after this. Um, The second day, it still had a little curl, and I got like two or three compliments, and I was like, girl, thank you. <laughs> but no, you know what I'm going to do? No, I'm not going to do it again. So what we're going to do is retwist my hair. I ended that quick, didn't I? We're going to retwist my hair because... Um, your mother-in-law wants me to come see her in Longview, my mother. And so, um, I'm going to be using Oyon's Honeydew Leave-In, Cryo Botanicals Mango Twist and Holding Cream, and then we have Echo Style of Gel. Now, this stuff, I think she sent this to me. Did she send this to me? No, she sent me something else that was big and it was it's like thirty dollars um i love this product though i absolutely like cryo botanicals i love this product i love it love it love it so we're gonna be setting my hair in twists girl i got a bunch of bobby pins in here i wasn't aware of my hair is <sighs> a mess 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 let's go ahead let me go get my um phone of uh mirror Okay. Oh, y'all. Y'all can see that my hair is actually a dark brown. You see that? You see that color? You see it? Y'all have to clean off this mirror. All right. So, y'all know I like a deep part. Look at that deep part. <clears throat> Okay, let me take off this watch. I got this cute new um, Apple band. And I always get my Apple bands from... Actually, I got this one through Amazon. Isn't that cute? That's cute, huh? Y'all see my nails? I got some new spring nails on. And those of you who don't know, I primarily wear um press on now but what i do is i like to i keep the extra nails when i put my nails on and then i mix them i mix them yeah i got some compliments on the nails i was wearing before and they were some that i created myself a really cute blue set so y'all let's just section off this wig <laughs> section this wig off Girl, a lot of hair. Man, it's all messed up. I have to tell your brother-in-law, he needs to leave me alone. Y'all, y'all. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say this. Yo, yo, my, my husband loves him some Vivian. He, 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 he loves him. So, um, I don't know how to say it without being crass. Um, he be all up on me. All up on me all up on me like i gotta make sure the birth control is on like because i can't be 50 with a newborn i am or i'll be like 45 with a toddler nah so uh, -uh. he like, and i told him just now when i went to go i said i need for you not to mess with me for a while like give me give me two days like i know that's a little thing like, give me two give me two days leave me alone get, get. Like, i'm glad i'm glad he about to he got he about to get a job y'all in a couple more days like <sighs> <laughs> but girl yeah all right y'all personal life besides your brother-in-law always messing with me um everything's going well we're settling in here in dallas and um I, i'm feeling a little bad 
for my baby because I'm a type of mom that I typically have things going on so that my child can have adequate time with other children. Um, and I just, you know, we've been busy and doing stuff and our priorities have been to make sure that we're settling in, uh, locate our doctors, start our appointments with our doctors. And yeah, and so that was the priority, of course, with JB School and all that. If you watch my vlog, you know that JB has been diagnosed with ADHD, formally diagnosed. I'm not just saying, oh, I think my child has attention issues. We went through the process when he was in public school. And then we went to a pediatrician who really is what really who really has to do it. And so um, it's a process, you know, and with JB, his his attention issues come up mostly in school. And so I've been working with him and talking to his teacher. And there are certain things that I do as a parent um, just to make sure that he stays on track with even everyday things at home. And so, yeah, there were just some things that my husband and I were concerned about with JB, just, you know, with the attention. And there are a couple of things that he's not staying on track. JB is still not eating any meat which with him, it's a texture thing. Um, he still rarely eats new food, y'all. Like all that food I be cooking, he refuses to eat. I know every, a lot of my friends who have older kids, they're like, you're gonna be eating. You're gonna be eating your words once he hits puberty because then he's gonna be eating everything. Okay, all right. So anyway, y'all, enough of that. Everything else is going good, going well. Um... So this is what I'm doing with this hair, y'all. I need to do them a little bit bigger. This is too small. So I'm going to be doing the twist just a little bit bigger. So girl, let's just get right into what I'm watching on YouTube. I'm not really watching a lot of YouTubers, you guys. I normally don't. I'm just being honest. I use YouTube for information. So like if there's something that I want to watch or if there's a scene from a movie that I want to rewatch. Um, if there's something I want to learn, which is, by the way, those of you who don't know, YouTube is one of the top sources for learning information or learning something, just to let y'all know. Anyway, so we're going to talk about this first. Oh, I, I try to see. I did not watch the Oscars last night. I didn't even know what's going on, child. But of course, I found out while I was still up about the altercation with Will Smith going up on the stage and hitting Chris Rock. Like y'all, I, I seriously got secondhand embarrassment watching that. At first I, I thought it was, you know, like a lot of people, I didn't know if it was real. I'm like, this can't be real. And then when he was basically, when I saw people's faces in the audience, this especially Lupita that was behind him, who looked absolutely beautiful. When I saw their reaction in the audience, I'm like, oh my God, that this is real. This isn't fake. Child, this is all I have to say about this. First of all, it was it was inappropriate for Chris to make that comment. Like, Will was laughing at him and then something changed. And there were some people, I saw some cute comments where people were saying that, um... He didn't like Jada's reaction. I understand that he also made a joke about them in 2016. Again, I think that they're, they were both wrong. Is this a knot? What the hell that is? Y'all see that? You yeah, y'all probably don't see it. That's a knot. I need to be careful. It was just a, a, it is again secondhand embarrassment. I think that Will Smith. We all know some. We don't know what's going on in their marriage, but clearly, in my opinion, they have a toxic marriage. Will and Jada. I think that you know we had Jada talking about she had an entanglement with August, which was or is her son's friend. And then you had Will Smith come out just a few months ago saying there's been no infidelity in the marriage. Like, what are you talking about? So either there's been no infidelity or you guys have an open ma marriage or an agreement to where you know what's going on. So to you, it's not cheating because you are aware of it. Will is struggling with some things on all different levels. 
that just escalated things for him. That, that, that was it for him. So that was displaced anger. So now, what is the thing that we're talking about now? Even me. We're not talking about, I don't even know what he won the Oscar for. The only thing we're going to be hearing about for the next two, two or three days, instead of acknowledging that he won an Oscar for the first time, mind you, now we're talking about him going upstairs, uh, going up on stage. So, so another thing that I saw on um, YouTube, because I wanted to look it up, Senator Cory Booker hyping up Judge Brown, who is currently being um, nominated for Supreme Court. And you guys, I saw a small clip of it on Instagram because I follow, I forgot the CNN, is her name Angie? Fair-skinned girl that sometimes wears the braids. You know who I'm talking about? Um, she shared it on her Instagram and I could tell it was edited and chopped up but it was so great to hear that. And so I wanted to see the entire, his entire speech. Again, this is from um, Representative, or Senator, excuse me, uh, Cory Booker. So I went on Instagram and I spent a good 30, 40 minutes watching his speech. Not only did I do that, but I also went back and looked at her interactions with um, the other people who were basically saying, it was mostly, it was like two Republicans I saw, you know, one of them is here in Texas, um, drilling her, again, this is Judge, Judge Jackson, and so it's it just, a long story short, Corey basically said, there is nothing that anybody could do or say to kill my joy. This is a joyous a moment for us as Americans and as black people. So this there's something important that people need to recognize when you are one of few in a space of primarily black, excuse me, uh white people, oftentimes your expertise, your knowledge is often judged or uh are, are misjudged or sometimes they want to know how did you get here? And so Corey was basically trying to say, you deserve this. You are worthy of this. Um, we come from a people, a, a ancestry or lineage of people who love this country when the country does not love you. And, and that's something monumental, you guys. And so I started tearing up, child. I had JB watch it. And JB was shocked. I said she would, she would be the first black woman in this position and JB looked at me just to see him you have to you have to understand he's only he's only nine so to hear something like this and he knows how long we've been on this earth and he's like thinking how is that possible I can tell in his eyes he doesn't understand like how is that how is that possible that she would be the first one so yeah that that was that was just amazing to see him lift her up in that spot and just um it was a beautiful thing and I felt hell I felt like it was me and it made it made me feel proud um for her because I really to be quite honest I didn't know anything about what was going on y'all I try not to dwell into some of the political stuff because sometimes I don't understand everything I'm gonna be the first one to say that I don't understand all the ins and outs but this right here was was really important so I was like okay um what else again I'm watching all the crime watch the girl I I have a thing for it y'all not the only thing that I am so I know y'all are tired of it too I am so sick and tired of hearing these stories of children being abducted children being I don't want to say the word. I don't want to get flagged. When I tell you there was another man, and I think this was in Louisiana, where he killed the girlfriend and he tossed he tossed a two-year-old over the bridge, screaming and crying. I just don't get... <sighs> 
I just don't get this this behavior that is running rampant with and it's young it's not even just just young people it's all ages that are doing this but that's what I look at sometimes is the true crime stuff and I just feel sick to my stomach with some of the stuff that's happening with these you know defenseless children and that's what gets me in these stories where you know they can't defend themselves. Um, so what else am I watching? What else? What else? What else? We talked about Jada and we all got <laughs> uh talked about Cory Booker. What I'm watching, girl, I am watching a lot of stuff, okay? So let's start off with Snowfall. Um, disclaimer, I am gonna be giving spoilers. If you don't want to hear it, don't watch it, baby. So I am watching Snowfall, Girl Franklin. So look, 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 hold on, y'all. Is Mel never coming back? Is that it? Because I know that Franklin showed her that he was using that dang on cane as a prop in, in last season. And he really doesn't need the cane. So I'm on episode... What episode am I on? I think I'm on episode three. And um, Franklin... Let me just say the actor that plays Franklin... I see him going places, you guys. He is a great, great, great actor. And so <clears throat> the mother, Franklin's mama, basically told um, Franklin's girlfriend, who was pregnant, that I'm going to let you know right now. Well, because let me back up. Because they got, there was a big shot shootout in the previous episode, right? Some people got shot up. That The white FBI guy, I forgot his name. He got shot up too. And so... Franklin's mother was like, look, you okay now, but you best believe there's going to always be somebody coming after y'all. And so the girlfriend, who's also a lawyer, was like, okay. So Franklin already told her to go home, right? Child, when Franklin got home, that place was cleared up. She had left, left him a note. And of course he blew up. And so Franklin's, um, he ends up going to the doctor's appointment and she's like, I think we need to spend some time apart, basically. And he's like, well, I can hire her. I talked to, what is his name, Ari? And I can have Avi. Sorry, I can talk to Avi. I can have some people watch you. She's like, no, no, no. I need to be away. And I think, I honestly think that's a smart move on her part. But Avi said something to Franklin that made Franklin stop and think. So the one scene, I had to play it back. And I think it kind of unsettled Franklin. Avi told Franklin when he first met him, he said, you know, wow, this guy can do anything. He can be a teacher. And I'm just making up stuff, y'all. I don't remember the exact words he used. But he's basically telling Franklin, and Avi is an older man. So, so he's been there. He's been, he's been in the business for a while. So he's like, wow, this kid could do anything. He could be an author. He could be a lawyer. He could be a rabbi. He could be a drug dealer. And so he goes on to tell Franklin, he said, you know what? Um, I'm always going through and there's always a war. You know, I'm always, you know, it's always a war after war. But with you, the war is inside of you. And so Frank is like, he, he, he had to think about that for a minute. Um, what else? What else? Next up. There's something about Pam. Child, <laughs> Renee Zulula, Renee Zillowinger. Y'all know I can't pronounce anything. She is playing the hell out of this role as Pamela Hupp. There's something about Pam. Again, spoiler. So this is based on a true crime. And there are a couple of people, you guys, who are not happy about this series. The family apparently is not happy about the series and how they're making light of the murder dark humor and they don't like that which i, I can understand because their their mother was was killed and that's that's absolutely horrible but let me let me give you the background a little bit because i actually had saw this case again because i'm into the true crime stuff i actually had followed this case before they even made the movie so i was excited that oh my god it's gonna be a movie with renee scrunched up face yes i'm here for it so Pamela Hupp was friends with a woman named Betsy. Betsy 
ends up murder. Her husband calls the 911. I believe the 911 call is is available on YouTube. I may be wrong. But the husband calls 911 and initially says, my wife has committed suicide. And the 911 dispatcher is like, well, was she sad or depressed? And she was battling cancer. And I believe this was her second um, battle with cancer, unfortunately. And so... Long story short, he was tried and convicted of murdering his wife and served, I believe, four years in jail before they found enough evidence to charge Pamela Hupp. Now, child, Pamela was like, <laughs> why would I want to kill her when I could just knock off my mama for more insurance money? She literally told the detectives this. The detectives did a horrible job on this case, first of all. Y'all, hold on. The detectives did a horrible job on this case because Pamela was the last person to see her alive. She was the person that was listed as the beneficiary. She was changed to the beneficiary. Uh, Betsy changed her and removed her husband because she felt like he wasn't good with money, right? But, oh, and the husband, what's his name, Russ? He had an alibi. He was with his friends. They were playing this role playing like Dungeons and da Dragons and Harry Potter shit. They were doing that, and they were there was like four or five. There was like four or five witnesses that said that he was what was playing witchy witch shit. He didn't have time to murder his wife. Not only that, but he stopped and he got like some Arby's and stuff, and so they had that receipt. But the prosecutors was like, "Okay, Russ, you got an alibi." Uh, Pamela was the last person to see her see her alive, and she's a beneficiary. Yeah, Russ did it the hell y'all that poor man that's just horrible so he spent four years in jail and she was supposed to have set up a fund for the for her daughters because i believe they had a biological daughter and then pamela had a daughter excuse me betsy had a daughter with someone else previously or both of the kids from someone else i'm not sure but regardless they had two children betsy and russ and so Pamela did not send the, those girls any money. Those girls didn't see, see a dime of that money, sadly. But this, this gets even worse. Pamela's mama was found dead on the ground. She said, supposedly fell. And guess who was the beneficiary? Pamela was. She had like a crazy amount, like eight times the amount of Ambien in her body. So, supposedly, I look, I'm, hypothetically, Pamela could have gave her mother all this medicine and pushed her over to collect insurance money. So, that would make a second death. Now, we have a third person. Y'all, this woman is evil. I have... I, this case, this case is crazy. What she got convicted of, child, what she's really in jail for is killing this man named Lewis. And I don't know if she's been formally accused of killing Pamela. But she clearly, she did it, child. She's like... So yeah, there's something about Pam. I do have Atlanta on my watch list, but I'm not ready yet. Y'all, that could be a weird space because Lakeith, let me tell you something. Lakeith, who's on the show, and I find him so attractive, you guys. I know I like the weird, quiet types. My husband's weird and quiet. But I find Lakeith overall that weird, quiet, nerdy, attractive. That was something that he did post a couple of... Uh, he, he had posts for a magazine... And he posted on his Instagram a picture of him wearing um, a very feminine looking shirt, negligee, and some stockings and some pumps. Actually, I think it was like a suit top or something, but it was chest hair and shit. And then stockings and some pumps. And a couple of people were like, um, what are you doing, Lakeith? <laughs> Girl, black people. <laughs> A couple of people like, um, Lakeith, we, we got questions. And someone said, this ain't it, this ain't it, homie. This is my thing. And that, yeah, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling that look at all. I don't like that. And hear me out. It's not like he came out of the woodworks like Prince. He's a good one. Prince came out here. He's like, yeah, I wear heels and I wear your girl's friend mascara and I'll steal your girl. 
but and, and Prince was confident with it. Like Keith came out here cool and collect, and now he wants to wear. You know, he's like, okay, give me my pumps, I'm ready. So I'm like, I'm not. And so he ended up. Another thing that didn't sit well with me: live in it. If that's what you want to do, live in it. He deleted the picture and everything. I'm like, <laughs> what happened to your your heels, Lakeith? So he removed that. Um. He removed the picture because of all the comments, which he has every right to do with his channel on Instagram. But I'm like, baby, you either, you, anyway. So, and he only did this, these were photos he was sharing for a magazine cover he had, did. What are we talking about? Child, we went way off. Y'all know how I am. So, I do have Atlanta on the bandwagon. I do have, um, Good Morning Veronica, which is like a, detective true crime type of show i'm watching something called bad vegan which is uh based on it's almost like a documentary on netflix i'm watching that and i am also watching bridgerton yes season two of bridgerton is back <sighs> the dupe's fine ass isn't here but baby there is so much in the show that I'm not missing him as much. So in the end, again, disclaimer, we are going to be revealing some stuff. Spoiler alert. Um, the end of season two, we found out who Lady Whistledown is. And she is Penelope, a.k.a. Pen. And did y'all know that the voice, uh, the person doing the voiceover is Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins? I love her, y'all. I love Mary Poppins. Anyways, Julie Andrews. And Julie Andrews, I have to look up her age. Mama is 86. Good for her. So she does the voiceover. And um, by the way, the guy that does To Catch a Predator he does the voiceover for there's something um there's something about Pam. Just to let y'all know that that yeah. Anyway, so Bridgerton. So now everyone wants to figure out who is who she is. So of course there has to be a storyline that what who is going to be the new couple. And they already give it to us. So the queen, honey, the queen came out. I am here for the fashions. The whoever is responsible for the costume. Is done is doing a remarkable job. I love that the fashions aren't because typically in this type of era, which is the 1800s, early 1800s, it could be very pale blue, white, ivory, but we get pops of red, burgundy with Lady Dunbury. Um, is that how you pronounce her name, y'all? Is it Dunbury or Danbury? Anyway, with the arch eyebrows, um, you get yellow with pen. You notice that everyone has everyone's. Every character, at least I've noticed that the characters tend to stay within their color scheme. Lady Dunbury tends to stay in the warm colors, like the, the wines, the burgundies. Kate Shima, or Sharma, excuse me, who is an Indian actress who is absolutely breathtaking. I am, I do appreciate that they hired or they casted a dark skin, um, most of them said South Asian. Someone with some color in them, because typically, you know, we know that Indians can have the colorism thing too. It's, it can get really bad with them. And a lot of that is based on their caste system, even though I'm sorry, I'm going way off tangent. So, Kate, her colors tends to be the blues. P Penelope's mother has to be my best. She is dressing the hell. Whoever's dressing her, all of her dresses are beautiful. Her color seems to be the greens, okay? So, Daphne, she tends to be the whites. The pinks, you know, very girly. So with this season, they're trying to find the diamond. And the new diamond is Kate's younger sister, who she's been basically molding her. You two and their mother, Mary, apparently had a falling out with the queen. Because I believe the Mary just, the mother, excuse me, whose name is Mary, just up and left. She up and left didn't tell anyone. And the queen was like, mm-mm. She let her know. I remember that shit. But... <laughs> So anyway, Lady Daphne was like, she's telling, she's letting the sisters know, since y'all up in my house, I'm going to have you to have the best tutors. You're going to have piano lessons. You're going to play the harp, the cello, the flute, whatever the hell. You know, you're going to learn French, Portuguese. The sister, Kate, was like, I've spent a great deal of time teaching my daughter. I mean, my, my sister, because it's almost like a daughter to her. She's like, I spent a great deal of time teaching my sister how to do all of this so that she can marry for, you know, get someone that's suitable. But there is 
I almost agenda to Kate's finding her sister, someone who is wealthy, which I'm not going to give that away just in case y'all want to. Um, but baby, Lady Dunbarry was like, I don't remember what scene it was, but oh, oh this was the scene. Kate was basically like, Lady Dunbarry was questioning Kate, like, you're okay with not finding a husband? This is okay. You just want to focus on your sister? You better take your ass down there and flirt around and twirl around. And Kate was like, you seem to be fine with it. Child, Lady Dunbarry was like, excuse me, hussy. I have... <laughs> Lady Dunbarry said, I have lived my life, child. I'm a widow and you better hope that you can have a life like mine. At the rate you're going, you wish you, you ain't going to have my type of life. And get your ass back downstairs. That's basically what she told her. And Kate shut up and was like, um. <laughs> so, um, I believe the French, what, what is her name? The French dressmaker saw Pen down there pretending to be an Irish lady. And, but she's like, I'm going to keep this secret. You down here buying quills and ink and stuff. I ain't going to tell nobody what you're doing. We all have our secrets, but you, you know, keep it classy. Uh, I feel so sorry for Pen. You know, y'all, my favorite character is actually, it would have to be Pen. I like her. I think she's absolutely adorable. So, yeah, that's what's going on. And, you know, the queen got her some zebras. Um, oh, oh, I forgot to say this. Clearly, Kate is in love with Tony Anthony Bridgerton, who basically her sister was named the Diamond. And the Diamond is typically the most valued girl in the country or the city, or whatever. And so the Queen named the younger Sherma girl the Diamond. And the brother, I think he has a thing, I think he's smitten with the younger sister, but he is in love with the older sister so it should be really interesting to see how this plays out y'all i think the younger sister is trying to hold it together but child i know one thing if that duke was here they are none none, none of those men would have a chance <laughs> none of them would have a chance baby all right y'all that is it i did my hair what i'm going to do is I need to really pay attention to these ends. Make sure these ends are really, really put together. I see myself wearing a lot of um, uh, twists. Twists smaller than this. And if I do do a twist out, uh, some wash and goes. Which I don't want to do a lot of wash and goes. Because, girl, wash and nose. So that is it, y'all. With my hair back like this. That is it, baby. All right, you guys. Take care. Bye.